Hi Taurus and welcome to your June 2022 general tarot forecast. This is Sky coming on to talk to you about the month of June. I hope you're all doing really well. I am coming on and doing this reading for you right at the final part of the waning moon after we had the blood lunar eclipse of May 15th. Um, so I'm coming to you with the final bit of energy from that as we prepare to go into the beautiful, beautiful new moon in Gemini, uh, which I made a video on. Uh, be sure to navigate over to my channel and uh, check that out because it was a very hopeful and a happy feeling energy. Nonetheless, we have a few um, karmic kinks to work out here coming from this eclipse season that happened on your axis with, of course, the solar eclipse in your sign that happened on April 30th, exactly a month ago now and uh, the lunar eclipse in your opposite sign of Scorpio, May 15th. Um, what's changed since then? Okay, where do you see the change happening? Where do you see uh, the greater call or the greater cause emerging? Okay, it's a big shift point, I think, in every Taurus person's life that happened in May. I mean, these are the stories that you might look back on for a really long time. These are um, the big moves, the big uh, shifts, the big changes in geography, the big stuff, okay? Um, so, yeah, um, intuitively, for you in June, Taurus, coming off of that feeling, it's like a sink or swim feeling. So these are the types of new beginnings that come rarely in life. And February through April of 2022 and what was shown to you that needed to go or needed to leave the experience during that time needs to either be continued or re-implemented here in June. A lot of people have had to make sacrifices, okay? A lot of people have had to cut spending, have had to cut habits, have had to cut addictions, and have had to stop blaming people who can't shoulder any more blame and just like retract some of this blame or retract some of these grudges or retract some of these time-wasting mechanisms, to call them what they are, and to start like actually caring about the breath that they're breathing now. So um, we don't have time, Taurus, anymore to like blame people of the past or to um, lose sleep over um, our egos or to lose sleep over also like blind consumption of some kind. Um, I talked in the Pluto return uh, of the US video um, about blind consumption and about how that was a big kind of um, threat or a big problem area, like where people can't control what they're consuming, whether it be uh, music, media, food, um, substance, credit, <laughs> whatever it is, people can't like freaking control it. So um, here we are in June of 2022, where that either becomes like a distant view into the past of like, wow, I was really incapable of controlling myself back then, or whether that's like now like being buried in debt or being... Um, uh, struggling with like health because of a certain type of food that we can't stop eating or a certain type of, um, you know, North Node, right, in your sign, conjunct Uranus, huge Taurus stelliums in May. And then this, uh, especially the lunar eclipse of May 15th, it's edgy. Okay, Taurus, it's very edgy. And it's an edge of your progression. It's an edge of who you are. And it's so, so opportune. Okay, a time of chaos essentially becomes a great... A time of opportunity for you. Um, there is a bit of chaos, and that might actually already be gone by the time you're getting this reading. Like June stands to potentially start one of the most peaceful stories in your progression, I think, if we don't have an addiction to chaos, or if we aren't standing in our own way or being our own worst enemy. So some of the people that I've known in my life with strong Taurus placements like need that hard story or need that painful, traumatic experience like daily, okay, in order to like justify their current feelings or in order to sometimes justify their addictions or justify their um, moves. And um, that's part of being on the Taurus Scorpio axis. And um, I think that Taurus is looking at a sort of like wider general part of their timeline where they don't have to have these weird relationships with chaos or they don't have to um, continue depriving themselves of life and depriving themselves of their own motivations. So 
how beautiful June of 2022 is for all Taurus people if you can <laughs> transcend, right? Uh, that was what the lunar eclipse of uh, May 15th was offering, was transcendence. And a lot of us have transcended a lot more than we understand. A lot of us have way more at our disposal that we can't quite click over. Like some of us are still like operating on 2018 consciousness and like still in that like um, income or still in that um, feeling about life. And it's like very different now in 2022. And it's like your life is totally changed, but you're still in that consciousness or you're still in that vibe, you know, when Jupiter was in Scorpio. So we would have had a connecting point back to 2018 during the lunar eclipse. And um, what was really meant to happen and this will be very visible in June, is it was actually leaving that behind. So no longer is that the consciousness for us now. No longer do we have those illnesses. No longer do we have those flashbacks. No longer do we have those financial circumstances. This is now 2022. And things have changed for some for the better and for some for the worse. So um, really, we have just such an opportune time to uh, create a new story or to create and forge a new, um, more peaceful, more unapologetic and uh, less constrained by like other people, like I'm serious, like try to just cut off these bonds. I know I had to do that during the lunar eclipse. Like I had to have this like major meditation because I was feeling like I was being like sapped by people from my past. And I was feeling like people from my past were like using me or something to like justify their own like uh, difficulties or like blaming me unfairly or something. And I'm like, I can't have that anymore. So I was just like meditating during the lunar eclipse and I was just like in sort of in a state, like a really beautiful state of meditation. And I just had to like cut that off. And I already saw that like ripple psychically through these people's lives. And I was like, this is really crazy energy that we're dealing with during this time. And I recommend the same for you, Taurus. I recommend if you haven't already had that to just like, if you can like meditate and envision yourself, I don't know, just removing other people's psychic attack on you or removing other people's uh, toxic connecting point to you. And, um, I don't know, embracing a safer space. And I mean, this can also be done just through prayer. This can be done through healthy lifestyle choices. It doesn't have to be like a kind of lunar eclipse and Scorpio moment in order to not have toxic connections at a spiritual level. Um, honestly, just like your daily decisions have a lot of bearing on whether or not those can be maintained or can even be like hooked into you or not. So, um, what I would definitely recommend intuitively for June is like a lot of new healthy implementations, but it's really hard, you know, if we're also doing that or if we're like hooked into someone else or if we can't like, if we still have like codependent energy lines or we're using other people to justify, if we're on the other side of that, you know, using other people to justify our current paths, you know, it's hard for us to then be healthy because it's almost like a compromise of the general aura, which then attracts or leads us to want unhealthy things. So what an incredible kind of dialogue about Jupiter and Scorpio, which we had in 2018, and the toxicity and the expansion of toxicity or the expansion of uh, psychic difficulty, and the opportunity here in June 2022 after this eclipse to totally transcend that. So although this dialogue is quite shadowy and, and like dark and hard, I wanna really um, impress upon you all that that's not what it's about. It's not about darkness. It's not about recognizing psychic attacks. It's not about um, freaking out about toxic energy connections, but it is about transcending those things and having a much fresher, much lighter, much more capable viewpoint here, okay? And it's about new games too, okay? So starting a new game or starting a new story or starting a new trajectory of some kind. I mean, look, you've got the three of wands, the world, the wheel of fortune, ace of pentacles. Um, something is wrapping up and something is very old, which means that there's a new start or a new foliage uh, coming for you, new growth, new, 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 new beginnings, okay? Um, especially starting at the new moon in Gemini. So by May, f I'm sorry, June 1st, there's going to be just such a new energy line for you guys to be on. And I just recommend really getting like the... I don't know, all of the thoughts about your ex, like, out, okay, um, journal it all out, how do you feel, what happened, why is it still, like, on your mind, and close the journal and move on, okay, there's a very big call for all of us to move on here, 
Um, <clears throat> and sometimes when we have such a stringent <laughs> push towards moving on, people start to get really romantic about the past. It's like reverse psychology or something. Like just because we need to move on or just because we have like just the best opportunity we've ever had in our lives to like really have such a fresh, new, perfect experience. We've got to like now romanticize the past or we've got to now like think about how things were. We've got to like really try to like seek closure when we never would have if things were just a little bit tougher on us, okay? Now that That's a interesting um, dynamic within the human condition to think about. Um, it's like if things were harder, you wouldn't really even be having the luxury of like romanticizing the past or if things were like worse, you know, um, it wouldn't really um, have any type of, you wouldn't even like be thinking about like this ex or this person from your past or anything like that. So um, are we then inviting the universe to make things hard on us so that we quit, you know, worrying about things of which we have no control over? There's a dialogue for that, which is why we've really got to get fresh, original, and um, uh, just leafy, okay? Leafy, Taurus, like uh, earthy, growing, all right? This is a time of growth. This is a season for planting seeds. This is a season for, you know, that type of thing, the creative capacity, as opposed to the destructive capacity or the um, wilting capacity. <laughs> and I just want to like really reaffirm that for you all here, that like you're facing one of the most creative, growth-oriented, blooming, beautiful, innovative, wealthy, legendary parts of your experience. And I mean, I do feel that for Taurus with like the North Node in your sign and Uranus in your sign, it's like a mad scientist vibes, okay? Um, and that's a lot of energy to have in the head and to have in the mind and the ego, okay? And um, do what you can to like channel some energy like down into the body okay like i've been talking to some of the other signs about like decentralizing the energy okay getting some of it into the hands and the feet and uh, pulling it away from the brain because like collectively across the board we're all feeling that but like you're like the representative of it right it's in your sign <clears throat> and i do feel that for you there's got to be something very mental to channel it like a high algebra okay like very high astrology work or very um innovative formula crafting chemistry okay um mixology i don't know something that shows you like making your own recipes or making your own like companies or your own patents i don't know there's something uh, new formulas new maths new <clears throat> um i don't know new genus of plants or something like that's to me the energy of north node uranus and taurus is like innovation basically and there's to a degree mad scientist vibes <laughs> um, so how can you channel that positively? I hope it's not trying to like come to a new conclusion about your ex or trying to like, I don't know, be like in mad scientist mode over the past or something, because that is what I'm really trying to steer you guys away from right now. Um, but for most Taurus, I mean, you're, you're, you're doing fine and, and, um, aren't there, but for the small percentage who might be there, that's, you know, what a lot of the reading real estate is going to today. So Let's talk about your week to week Taurus, week one, three of wands, rooted down by page of cups. Beautiful new energy, innovation, new emotional beginnings, new horizons, young, youthful, fresh, light. Also looking to someone with the back turned. Um, one time when I had a very difficult breakup many, many years ago, all I ever got was the three of wands and I puzzled and puzzled. I'm like, why do I keep getting three of wands? And of course, you know, I was probably facing a new horizon. I mean, that makes sense, but also, like to me, it symbolized um, looking towards someone with their back turned to you. So you might be doing that. And I recommend turning <laughs> yourself away from that or more so embodying three of wands. That, like, look at this new story that you can begin or look at these new horizons. Rather than paying so much attention to someone who's turned away. So week two, Knight of wands rooted down by wheel of fortune incredible creative growth. So people want you as a part of their strategy team. People want you to um, advise them. People want you to inject some creativity into their lives. And also there's a change in fortune. So Wheel of Fortune is very prevalent lately, which is interesting to me. It's not a card that had been coming up for a long time, but here in June, the Wheel of Fortune has been really <laughs> jumping out a lot. And it's saying to me that that which was once an advantage is now an impediment. And that which was once an impediment is now an advantage. So I'm creatively understanding how to perhaps build off of what has previously been a hard point for you is probably the way forward now. 
week three, the two of pentacles rooted down by the ace of pentacles. Okay, um, minor crossroads, minor choices, minor decisions. Like, try to not freak out about it. Like, am I going to use that credit card or that credit card to pay for this? Who cares? You know, am I going to... So you just need, like, a greater feeling of community. You just need, like, a greater want, a greater... Um, connection to a group right that's what this is asking for so you might like mix yourself up with like decisions and like money qualms or qualms of like position or materialism but you just really need like more people around you or more friends okay um and that that's what this is going to all be about you know sometimes we just have to add it all together you know what is the ace and the two that's the three of pentacles you just need more teamwork dynamics okay you need to be the like a part of a greater team or this energy needs to like channel by like you contributing maybe to a greater team environment and finally in the fourth week taurus you got the world rooted down by the king of cups beautiful like the world has also been coming up a lot this month okay and i think that we need to love it for what it is okay like loving the world loving the, the ground that we're walking on, loving the fact that the story is ending. Okay, thank God, you know, it's about time. Um, <clears throat> you know, understanding that like there was a breakup for a reason, you know, um, understanding that we cut off that bond or we cut off that tie for a reason and having the emotional maturity with the King of Cups to like laugh it off or to, um, you know, not have to be overly emotive about something that doesn't now matter. So, um, yes, it is like an emotional ending though. So some of you could be like having tears of joy or some of you could be like facing <clears throat> your last day, like working a job that you hated, like nonetheless, it's surreal. But here now you get to like embark on the path that you really love or you get to embark on the stuff that really matters in life. So that's beautiful. It's like bittersweet endings, you know, bittersweet. The energy is bittersweet this month. And some of you might even be like, well, gosh, now I see, you know, my ex in a different light or now I see my old job in a different light or now I see that old place that I used to live in a different way like I hated it the whole time but now it's really special to me so like that's a confusing place that humanity I see this like all the time and people that I work with <clears throat> where it's like they only want something when they don't have it or they only feel nice about something once it's gone so um, we have to really doctor that I think I think that that's a big big healing point for the collective right now is like I'm appreciating the value of something while we have it okay big big important work to do there appreciating what we have while we have it yeah and um then like kind of seeing like also as we like go into the future or we uh, romanticize the past that we also are continuing that vicious cycle and we're not then valuing the present because we're choosing to romanticize the past in that present moment so this is like a minefield and then june really does interrupt the vicious cycle like i said in the uh, june 2022 comprehensive astrology video so there's a big interruption there and it's going to be healing so you might also see that like if you're <clears throat> if you're spending too much of your present resources romanticizing the past which you know is taurus is not so tending towards that but i'm just feeling that for you all you know you could have like weird interruptions or you could have like i don't know um some kind of like failure or some kind of glitch or some kind of like major uh, repair that you have to make on something to like just get you into the present moment like to like wake you up out of the past and like move you into the now like inconveniences could crop up or like all the mental energy like could like cause your device to like mess up so like let's just kind of try to get into the present moment and enjoy what we're holding i mean look at how powerful the thing like in your hands now is like that which you now hold that which you now carry is not something you ever had then okay so let's try to enjoy this present moment and grow through it okay anyway taurus i hope you enjoyed this reading be sure to check out your sun moon rising sign it is a late night reading um so i have been in a late night mode here and um, i hope that it resonated for you um, I had a bit of a crunch myself and had to attend uh, to some other areas of my life. So I had to move pretty quickly with this month's readings, um, which such is life, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, sometimes, um, rare are the times where things go exactly as planned and we do have to be able to adapt and we have to be able to make things work sometimes. Um, but anyway, I'm going to put together an extended reading for y'all and we'll look into that. Like, let's, why not? Let's just like go into, you know, how do we make this work? How do we, um, also grow into a place where we're experiencing more times of 
greater ease and less worry, less mental energy, and, and more like true abundance. We'll look into that in your extended reading. And um, I hope you're all doing really well. I've so enjoyed speaking to you all this month. It's like I just love doing Taurus readings so much because it helps me as a Scorpio, and I, I feel a lot of similar energy to you all, and I've known a lot of Tauruses in my life. So um, yeah, uh, come check out the extended reading if you want. I will link it below and in the top right-hand corner. Otherwise, your likes, comments, and subscribes are great free ways to support this channel. And um, yes, all of your Sun, Moon, Rising counterparts should be available also on YouTube. So um, however you all feel, um, all the links are below. Have a great month. Bye, Taurus.